Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock. With me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Good evening, Solution. Do you think uh, Do you think that the footy the footy fixture people purposely only scheduled Essendon on one Friday night for the year, you know, because they had Fiona's forecast in mind? Because the Friday games has really thrown us a... Yeah. On, hasn't it? Yeah, then they also timed it for the coldest fucking week of the year. Speaking of which, look at you, Rugged Up. He looks like he should be sitting in an igloo. He's got a, a woolly, woolly, wooliest of woolly blankets wrapped around him. He's got a beanie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make, the make man the, in Australia. I make no apologies for looking like a grandma. This old, like, this old period home, the front room is freezing. You don't have a little portable heater that you could. Yeah, I got I got my little heater going. I got I got the works. But, Are uh, you the softest man in Australia? And, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. In short. I mean, no, the irony is I have a cold shower every morning, but yeah. today was different. The, the wind was just like ice, but a uh, lot to talk about. So there's been a heap of ch -ch -ch changes. Whoa. So. Out is Wiedemann. Now, not not a real surprise for me. Um, I, I personally don't think it... It's not the worst thing for a player to go back to the twos and um, try and get a bit of the footy, but we'll talk about that. Uh, so Wiedemann out. Joe Menzi omitted, which is very interesting. And Nick Hind is the sub again. And in Phillips and in Cox for his first game of the year. So great to see him back after after the injury. Where do you want to start? Well, can I start with the most frustrating and the most infuriating of them, which is Menzi? He's, he's offended. I'm telling you, I, I, I did say it a few weeks ago about him having offended someone, but I can't for the freaking flippiest life of me get my head around why on earth you would you would drop the only small forward in the team. He's the only small forward in the team and he's been dropped. Don't don't give me Guelphie and Snelling as small forwards. I was of the opinion that there should be another bona fide small forward in. Not take one out. <laughs> yeah, that's the, it's the, it's the second bit that I don't understand. I mean, we forget how young is he? Like, he's very young. Yeah, very young. I can't off the top of my head he'd be... 20 or something, if that. Yeah. Uh, the fact he was subbed so many times was a bit baffling from a form perspective. So I don't know whether uh, – maybe he's not following certain team rules. Maybe. Either, either during, during the game or during the week. But structurally, there is no other explanation why you would uh, – if you want to drop a small, you, you immediately think of Snelling. Or Guelphy. Like you don't he's the only he's the only posi position player in the in his position. It just it, it is the most baffling in fact, to be quite honest with you, the, I don't think I've been this bemused by the changes all year. I am incredibly bemused. Like I I, I love that Nick Cox is back, but I'm not quite sure I don't see a, a really hot position for him. Either whether he's going to pinch hit on the wing with Durham and and uh, mm. um, Martin, I, I'm pretty sure that the backs are locked. I from my mail, Laverde is a lock, no issues whatsoever. So he won't be a laid out. So I, I love that he's back. I just can't see where. What are they going to put him in the forward line? Like I don't, fun. I don't know. I mean, so obviously there's a lot of moving parts here with the ch 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 changes. Mm. Um, Jack, to, back to Jai Menzi, whether whether he's just a bit tired because of you know how young he is and how little senior football he's had, whether it's something other than his form or or whatever the reason, I don't know. Um, I mean, he's got a real nose for goal. He knows he knows how to find the big sticks as well. So he doesn't need a lot of possessions. As you as you rightly point out, he's kind of the only bona fide, you know, 
when you what's written on the tin small forward is actually what you get. And so, he, he's, in my opinion, he's been performing as such. He's and it's not he's not tired. He, the, the ball hasn't been going down there. If you if you said to me Hobbs or you know Perkins were dropped, I would say yeah they're managed and they're tired because they do a lot of heavy heavy lifting in their roles. But Menzi, no, that's that's not the reason. It just wouldn't be the reason. Or and I, I neglected to say the emergencies. Um, and we know that Scott is not adverse to a late change. We have Hind, um, emergency again after being the, the sub last week. Kane Baldwin, uh, Alwyn Davey, Jr., and Jai Menzi. So there is a world where he plays anyway, and all this um, this chat is for naught. Or oh, there's a world where Alwyn Davey comes in. Or he could very well be the sub. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it does seem strange. In terms of Cox, I'm a little bit like you. I was trying to think, does maybe Brian's going to play up forward? Key position, potentially? He's not a forward. He's not a forward. He's going to, no. like, he's not going to stay forward. He, he and, he and um, Phillips will uh, join and they'll share the ruck duties and forward. They'll do 50-50. Or does Bald is Baldwin the late change and he, he's going to come in and, and, and play play key forward? I don't know. I just they've they've had him secured in the back line all VFL for the, all year. They're not going to put him in the forward line. That's a no. This yeah. is what this is what I'm like confused about. And I, I mean, I, again, I'm I'm still driving the the Brad bus, but I tell you what, this is the most bemusing changes all year for mine. I hope I'm missing something. Put it that way. Who knows? The Brad bus might be taking a shortcut. It and might suddenly, be. And suddenly we're there an hour earlier than we expected to. That's true. Them. And I'm geographically challenged, so I, would, I wouldn't see that shortcut. So I might not see it coming. So what, just remind me, what have the Bulldogs got? I know Bailey Smith's in. What, anything, anyone else? Yeah, Bailey Smith and his four umpires are in. Have, have they called um, Hobbs? Um, not Hobbs. Hob? What, what's his name? Lob. Lob. <laughs> There's Buku. Buku Kamas, Josh Bruce, is that how you say it? Oh, and, they've got um, Bruce back. Oscar Baker are in, Bailey Williams, O'Donnell, McNeil, Garcia and Darcy all out. Is this is more perplexing. So they've called him, they've brought back Josh Bruce to help deal with the height down there, but we've dropped one anchor of our height in the forward line. So, yeah, very strange. Did you call him Bruce? Bruce. Yeah, Josh Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very, very, very perplexing. Don't it's know. An, it's an interesting one because for mine, the Bulldogs are a flimsy, flimsy team. So it's funny because last week, you know how in last week's forecast I said to you, um, the one thing about Geelong that when I watch is intercepts. Intercept kings they are. Within the first 15 seconds of the Geelong oh game, God. Solution texts me saying, within the first 15 seconds, there's two. They've taken two intercepts. The ball's in our forward line, but they've taken two intercepts. It so, was an it was an intercept fest, which is it was fest. intercept the loser. It was yes, it was, and we, we we did not cope. But the thing about the Bulldogs is that I don't see they're very flimsy in my eyes. I don't see a very concrete profile like I did with the Crows and with Geelong. I when I watch their games I see individuals. So I see uh Caleb Daniel who I rate so incredibly highly and I see Libba who is the clearance is a clearance beast. So I, I kind of I'm a bit more worried about individual brilliance in this game. Mm. So individual brilliance from a Bontem Pally who can win the game off his own boot. Um, a real a real beast like performance from Libba who can you know get everything out of the center so my mum and and their forward line they could they they can either kick 70, 70 points on you or they can kick two points on you seven points it's it's either it's either they're up and about and they're in full swing and momentum or they are doing absolutely fuck all. So they're a hit and miss for mine. Yeah, it's fascinating. Fascinating to think what will happen. Will we? I mean, we'll talk about the our predictions later. But it'll be fascinating to see how we structure. 
uh, where Cox plays uh, and how our forward line functions without that second tall, really. I mean, it is just Peter Wright. I, I thought that our our ascendancy this week was going to be the forward line, but I'm a little less confident without another tall down there, to be quite honest, because I thought mm. that's where we could potentially um, expose the Bulldogs with their lack of personnel. Liam Jones is is not in. Um, so yeah, that's why I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt. I wonder whether Phillips and Brian will spend time down there, rotate through. Yeah, they will, definitely, which is what they did with Draper and Phillips, you know. Hmm. Interesting changes this week. Yeah. At least it gave us something to talk about. Uh, one other question for you. Mm-hmm. I wondered whether Ridley might be a late out because I question his fitness. Well, not just me, a few people have. Do you, do you think mm-hmm. that's a possibility? If anyone, it'll be him. I think Laverde's totally fine. But if there is a laid out for Baldwin, I think it'll be Ridley. Um, but, look, I'll admit, you know, I was texting you during the game last week. I really switched off after half time. I did not watch it <laughs> pretty much at all, I'm not going to lie, because it was quite distressing. So I, ch- I chose to protect my piece, which I passionately... Project onto all you listeners, protect your peace. Um, and I didn't really look at much of the second half. Did Ridley look, Ridley look okay or did he look hampered? Yeah, it, it was hard to tell. Yeah, okay. I mean, I watched the last quarter while washing the dishes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the dishes was actually more appealing than watching the game. Look, so, a root canal would have been more, more appealing than uh, that game. Getting your nipples pierced would have been more fun, 100%. But, okay, so Ridley under a cloud, potentially. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But it, but it was hard to tell because it just wasn't a normal game last yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah, we, we shall see, we shall see. Now, mm-hmm. moving on to the Smoking Joe and the Sitting Joe. So for new listeners, the Smoking Joe is the person that's going to smoke. Sitting Joe is going to do the Joe Danaher. And we wish he would have stayed on the fence. You're doing today smoking. the sitting, Joe. You're doing smoking. Yeah. And I'm going to do a you, and I'm going to bring in my smoke, my sitting Joe from last week and call on him to have the smoking this week. Um, this player, I thought would have, he would have been my Henneman. I know Jesse gave it to uh, Guelphy, who was also awful last week, but Redmond would have been my Henneman from that Geelong game. Again, I didn't watch much of it, but he was so incredibly poor and he also looked a little disinterested to me, which I don't, I really dislike and really irks me because uh, he's a leader down there and uh, if anything, you got to keep, keep your head up, basically. So he would have been my Henneman. But in saying that, I am choosing him for my smoking, and I think he'll have a little bit more freedom this week. Um, and I hope he gets off his chain. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I think I shouted him out as a nomination for Henneman last week. You did, and I was. Yeah, yep, I was happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, he would have been, I would have crowned him because he, yeah. Some very very poor efforts, and when I say efforts, I was alone in thinking that last week was less about effort than it was about just being beaten by a very very mm. on fire team. But there were a few efforts from a few individuals, and he was one of them that I was really disappointed with. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall him standing out. His effort is not what stuck in my mind. It was just his how fucking. Panicked he looked. Like mm-hmm. he, he was the guy that, that kind of started the rot. Yeah. It's a good yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, it was and he was one of the ones in the first fifteen seconds that um just the clangers coming off his hands and feet. Well, as we said in the podcast, we were good for the first two minutes. <laughs> we had two minutes of good football and then it, it was because I remember clangers from that two oh, minutes. Well, relatively few clangers. Suddenly, it was just became playing a city. An epidemic. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, well, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he bounces back. As, as actually, we're going to have a team of 
you know, 23 players who bounced back because they were all terrible. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, normally, so turning to the sitting Joe, normally a sitting Joe is somebody who's been playing well or at a level and you expect them to drop. I don't know there's many from last week that can get worse. So I might scrap last week, pretend it didn't happen, and reboot expectations. So on that basis, oh, God, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say I'm actually going to pick Laverd. He's been okay yes. relatively last few weeks, mm. and I think he might he might find himself on the wrong end of some free kicks. <laughs> no, can we just say a, a prayer? Get all your sage out. Get on your knees and let's pray for friggin' my my man King Kelly. Get your pentagon you out. Sacrifice yeah. a goat. Yep, um, a newborn, whatever you got yeah. handy, second yeah. because King Kelly is going to, and we're all, say it now, say it with me, say it together, we all are going to just look the other way to all the free kicks that King Kelly gets because you know that there are going to be a handful against poor King Kelly this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all know what we're alluding to. I, I'm, I'm hoping that all Bomber fans know that we're alluding to the free kick epidemic that is going to be, uh, that is Cody Waitman. Yeah. D does, does McGrath play on him? No, he's got a bit too, I reckon King Cadley's got a bit more fire, a bit more grunt for Waitman. He can be a, a bit of a shit, and I reckon King Cadley can just put him in his box a bit. Yeah, I hope you're right. That would be my opinion. Ideally, a, a box-shaped, you know, body size, as in a... Uh, well, let's not send him to carpet. the morgue, well, you know. <laughs> let's not no. send him to the morgue and maybe no. we just beat him. I mean, figuratively speaking, the casket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm a little worried as well. Like, there's been all this talk about Bailey Smith being so out of form this season. He's leaving clubs. He's unhappy with with uh, uh, Bevo. This is all shaping out to be a very big player-player in form game, and I'm a little 100%. bit scared. He's going to get three brown low votes. This is just written in the stars. Yeah, but I agree. This is a Brad Bust-led team, and, no, we can't think like that, okay? So turning to who we think will win, Oh, Lord. They have had the wood on us. Yeah. Not just beating we us. We don't match up all, all that well, I reckon, against them. No, we match up shit against them. Mm. But strangely, you know, it, as always happens, you know, when, when you have, suffer a loss like that, you know, it's you can't imagine how the team could possibly get it, you know come up and win the following week, and then as the week goes by, you start to get more confidence. Confident. The fact we're playing the Bulldogs, I don't like our chances at all. And I just think they will view us as vulnerable. And Absolutely. Yeah, I've just got a really bad feeling that it will be another umpire sodomisation also. I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say I think we'll lose by thirty. Oof, that's a that's a pretty big margin. Yeah. That's a convincing that would be a convincing margin. Fuck. All right, well, look, all week I have I have been supremely confident. Supremely what? confident. Yep. I have been confident all week. And then I saw these changes and I'm a little less confident, but I'm still gonna say we're gonna win. And I'm gonna say maybe thirteen points. Mm. Look, as I said, this game oh, you're right. this game could be the Bulldogs, they're a team of individuals in my eyes, individual brilliant players, but and and they they very much play on momentum. So when the momentum shifts their way, they can score heavily on you. Mm. 
but then also the other, if we can turn the momentum, they also get scored quite heavily against. So we, our job is to thrash any momentum, any little runs they get, because as I said, their forward line, it, it operates on momentum. Once Ugo Hagen gets up, he's tapping his chest and Waitman gets a free kick and he's double fisting. Like literally it's, it's just all momentum based for this team, I reckon. So if we could just put three on the board first, I reckon we'd be a really good chance. But I think we need to, we need to get the first couple or first three, ideally. And the crowd will be a big, will have a big statement, I reckon, with the umpires. The more noise that we can make, I think we'll have a difference. Well, there's your signal, everybody, to get down there. Because I uh, did make a difference against Adelaide. I do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The midfield battle will be interesting. Do you think we can... I think that's where we need to win it because I think, to your point about momentum, yeah, win the midfield battle with the clearances, a lot harder to get a run on. What do you reckon? Yeah. Well, it's one thing to win the midfield, but our freaking chemistry and cohesion between the midfield and the forward line last week was so bad, it looked like they were they, they were strangers and that they hadn't played together ever. So mm-hmm. it's one thing to get it out of the midfield, but fuck, I tell you what, the forward, and again, it's going to be different. It's going to look different this week without Wiedemann in there. Like So it's going to be a different setup again. Um, but... I hope, and I, I would suggest that Merritt wore that wall last week quite hard, and I hope he did, and I hope he'll be looking to bounce back. I don't think they'll tag him. Um, they'll probably send someone to him for a, maybe a defensive run with role, but I don't think they'll tag him heavily. They don't really have the personnel to do that. So um, Hopefully we can get some ascendancy and Bontempelli, you know, if we can keep him, you know, under wraps because he can turn a game, he can turn the game like that. Is there a chance we send Archie to him? I think it'll be a good, it'll be good learning for him. Dare I say the word? I think it'll be a good excursion and a good, um, a good test for him to run, to run with one of the best in the comp. Hmm. I think he he played you know on danger last week and I I didn't think he performed he did overly well but uh it, again he'll learn from that and it's these kind of you know tasks for him that's going to make him into the player it's getting beaten by these balls and these and these elite players that are going to be the making of him so send him to every player keep him on the whole game build up his tank agree he he, he his ambition should be to become one of these players. That's right. And what better way to do it than to um, witness up close what makes them great? That's exactly right. And how, how hard they work. Because I, I suspect he's also getting schooled in that in that department mm. for the later part of this year with all these big tests and playing more in the midfield because he can blow up quite early in a game. So... I suspect Brad Scott has said you have the pot- your potential is eleven out of ten, but you need to see what the makings of the elite are. So run with them, see at what point you start huffing and puffing and they're running off you, mm-hmm. and pr- come day one of preseason, that is your goal. That is on the forefront of your mind. So yeah, give him all give him all the tests. Do you reckon we're going to win? That gives Definitely. me some hope. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't think my predictions have been too good this this year. So I think uh, I don't. Oh. Sure I should be giving you hope. Fiona Damas was was in the building for a while, and she's she left was. for a little while. But and then you came you came for me, and you overtook. So your predictions have been pretty good recently. But anyway, I think it's just I'm more pessimistic. Are you <laughs> we, going to the game? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. Very good. Me and uh, Baby Solution are going. Oh, very good, very good. So hopefully she – and she's been to a few games this year and yet to see a win. Oh, no. So she's starting – Is this, a good, is this yeah. a good idea? I know, I know. This, this is her last chance, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. So who, who, who do you want to be sub? Providing the team is unchanged, who would you like to be sub? Oh, 
if the team is unchanged, then I'd say Menzi. Yeah. Or uh, I'd say Bo- I'd say Davy. One of those two. I want an impact forward. That's probably what I'll do. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It'll be intriguing. I, I, I reckon there'll be a late change. There's been more late changes than not recently. But are you, are you going to the game? I'll be there, absolutely. Yeah. So I think, I think your point is definitely well made. We need to jump up and down, boo, scream, yeah. yell. If any game is going to make a difference to the umpires, it's this one. Because if Wayne and, and Collingwood, they're the two Bulldogs and Collingwood, because they've got the they've got the uh, tendency to to really get in the umpires' uh, golden golden kids books. So uh, I think we need to yeah scream and make a lot like we're going to break the break the barriers. It needs to feel like that they're going to break yep. the barriers unless they start calling some Essendon and free kicks. We need to be the twenty third. Player. Yeah, absolutely. There's no excuse. I checked the forecasts. Not raining, so you're you're you can walk from the station or wherever you park to mm-hmm. Marvel. You're under a roof. It's not even that cold. I've noticed that the food. This could be just me, but the food is getting better at Marvel. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, am I alone on this? Okay. I, admittingly, I just get the hot chips, as everyone knows. But I found that they've been better the last couple of weeks. Is that just me? Maybe they're using fresh oil, possibly. Yeah. I, I don't eat at Marvel. I yeah, tend to – because there's enough stuff around. That, so I'll normally grab a meal beforehand. Oh, I see. Oh, so you, you yeah. eat outside of the – okay, gotcha. Yeah, and maybe I'll have a dirty pie at halftime. Yeah, yeah, you have uh, to. It's, it's, it's just illegal. It's illegal not to, hey? That's right. That's right. But, no, I, I think you're right. I think we need to go. We need to – Make our voices heard, and yeah, who knows? A, a win would be massive. Would be absolutely massive for, from a from this season's perspective. Well, the loser will go out of the eight. That's I believe that's the equation, is it not? Yeah, it is because we're eighth, so we'll definitely drop out, especially if Adelaide win or St Kilda. No, St Kilda are in the eight. Well, yeah, both Bulldogs, Bulldogs and Essendon are seventh and eighth respectively. Yeah. And, right. yeah, GWS and Carlton it's, are knocking on the door. Out. Yeah, Carlton have West Coast. So it's all – the loser is out of the eight. This is, a again, it's a mini final. I, I know mm. I said that against Adelaide. It felt like a mini final. This really feels like a mini final. But we knocked yeah. Adelaide out, so let's knock the Bulldogs out. Let's hope we don't treat it as a mini final because we don't win finals. Well, we won the mini one a couple of weeks ago. I never thought last week was a mini final, so, but I didn't quite think it would be a uh, a uh, thrashing like that. If we win tomorrow, can we clap back at these accounts, these Twitter accounts? They set the one final and say, "Hey, we just won a mini one. Fuck off." Yeah. In fact, I'll start a day since Essendon won a mini final, and I'll put zero. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> hey, what's the saying? Glass half full. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I, I, I've been pessimistic, but I'm starting to feel a little Could bit... Enjoy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else on the game before we go? We, we've got one couch question we're going to go to today. Oh, just one. Okay. Uh, anything else on the game? Um, how many... I'll go take a guess. How many free kicks for Waitman? Uh, three, but there'll be three goals. Okay, that that's that's a really heavy uh, penalty because he's he's a very good kick. He's a, he's a bit like Menzi actually. He's very versatile. Kick snaps them on the run. Can kick around the corner. Set shot. And same with Menzi. So well, he, get, he gets lots of practice because the umpires give him a lot of practice. That's right. But you know when you get no matter what when you get your opportunity you've got to be able to convert and he does. True, very true. Oh, three. Uh, Ooh, okay, gross. Yeah, that, I know. Not good, huh? King Cal, King Cal, I got you, bud. I got you. Yeah, I don't know. Do, 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 you reckon, do you reckon Kelly strikes me as a guy 
who trash talks. He does. He's good on the lip. Very good on the lip. Oh. And that's why I think he'll be good for Cody because he can get into his head. Whereas McGrath is he's a private school boy. He ain't he ain't trash talking nobody. He's, he's a sweetheart. He's the one you want your daughter dating. Yeah. So that's why I think maybe we give King Cal that job. <laughs> I, I I think Kelly's a very impressive person off the field. He is an incredibly intelligent person too. Very yeah. very smart. Um. So what's what what, what would he be saying to Waitman? <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's a podcast. <laughs> if yeah, that, do it. Yeah, do it. It's, oh, yeah. I have, well, I have, I have no uh no um. Like this is not on the record or anything. I, I don't know. I just would what my imagination would go to. Hasn't he had one or two off field issues? Who? Cody Waitman. No. Uh, he's had a couple of staging. You know, I don't know if he's had a free kick, free kicks called against him, or he's definitely been talked about in the media for staging. So that's gonna that that's that's what's gonna friggin' shit me the most is the ones that. Uh, in fact, that's the only thing that's going to shit me about him is the staging of the free kicks and, and conning the umpires. Okay. All right. Well, I, 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 I think I'm pretty sure I'm getting it wrong. I'm looking yeah. at the, the complete source of truth, which is Reddit. Okay, go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's nothing nothing there. I think I'm thinking of somebody else. But, yeah, let's hope, let's hope Kelly gets in his face, gets in his ear. And uh, let's hope the umpires don't react to every single throwing back of his head. Yeah. Um, throwing his arms in the air, diving off the ball like that one a few weeks ago. And That's what I'm uh, pardon? That's what I'm talking about. The staging. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Mm. All right. Uh, anything else on the game, or do I go to the couch question? No, I think we're I think we're comprehensive on the game. Oh, by the way, somebody did ask the question, how do they submit questions on the couch? So, No, can I just say on that, people think we make these up. Yeah, 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 that's right. We, 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 uh, we, we're not. What, what, my, my solemn promise to anybody that wants to send me a message on the DM with a question, I will not say who you are, so all questions will remain anonymous. But we have a massive backlog, particularly from the not going to lie Apps. thing that you put out. And that one we could go on for days and days and days. So, yeah. yeah but if you, 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 we do need an after dark segment to attack <laughs> a few of them. However, uh, there are a few, I did, I was flicking through a few of them today. Um, and there are some really good ones in there. So, what have you picked out for me? So, today I have. They're really, really interesting. I wish I could use my phone less, but I feel addicted. How do I fix this? It's so funny because when you start saying the question, I take a big sigh of relief because I, I don't know how dirty it's going to be and how uh, R-rated I need to make the answer. Um, no, well, we wait, we, we, who knows? It might be porn that's dra drawing to to their phone. That is true, but I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to assume it's Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all that shit. Uh, that's what a great question. Thank you mm. to whoever sent that, and I'm sure it's a question that, if not all of us, many of us have a problem with. Um, mm -hmm. I guess my first instinct is to say, well, before you can stop, you need to understand why you are addicted, or why we as a society are addicted to the, our phone, mm. and that is because. We want distraction from our problems. We want uh, a bit of relief from life sometimes. We want to escape our realities. And a lot of the time, that's okay because life is hard and sometimes we need an escape route, right? So it's okay. It's the same with a glass of wine. Life is hard. Sometimes you've got to shut down the noise, enjoy a bottle of wine and watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And that's the yeah. same with the phone. So that... The danger is that sometimes the phone and often the phone is doing more harm than good because if I, when I scroll on Instagram, all I'm seeing are ads for fake tan on women with perfect bodies. I'm seeing 
laser machines and, and you know, all these procedures that I I wouldn't, you know, that I should get because I'm I'm getting older as a as a woman and and so I can leave social media and my phone feeling worse than when I actually looked onto it for distraction. Mm. So it actually can be a curse when you're looking at your phone for dis- for distraction. It can you can actually come out feeling much much worse. So look, I know some people would say put curfews on yourself and blah blah blah, but I just find that it's just like a diet. You're it's too restrictive, and the one thing you're going to be thinking of is that ice cream in the freezer you're just you're just trying you're going to be thinking about your phone wherever it is it's all Mm. that's going to be on your mind and until you get that phone or that ice cream you're not going to feel settled internally so I wouldn't go with any restrictions what I'll tell you what I do I don't know if you have a um your own little tactic that you use to get off your phone solution but I'll tell you what I use for me when I sit down um, at night and I'm finished cleaning up and dinner and all that and I sit down and start watching TV and I feel the urge to go and get on my phone or swipe on Twitter or social media, next to me, and you're going to have to find what works for you, but next to me I've got, I'll sh- and I'll show you, I'm showing up to the camera, a set of playing cards and I've got a Sudoku book. Now, they're the two things. When my mind tries to escape whatever I'm watching and pick up my phone, Instead of picking up the phone, I've got the phone sitting there, but instead of my mind, it it automatically goes into, oh, pick up the Sudoku and do a Sudoku or get out, play a quick round of solitaire with the cards. And Mm. as soon as I've done one Sudoku or even put in a couple of numbers, the urge to look at my phone has dissipated. So like all addictions, it's just a matter of kind of cutting it at the source and replacing it with a healthy alternative. So... In your case, what, what what do you do? Do you find... You can yes. Edit? Well, some might doubt my credibility on this one, given I've sent about 7 billion tweets uh, in the last uh, X amount of years. But, yes, I... So my my job is on a screen all day. And, and so I get... My eyes get tired. So kind of the last thing I want to do is is pick up my phone in the evenings anyway. So I'm, I must admit, I... A little bit like you, like I, I, I'll play play a bit of guitar or whatever in the evening. It's a great one. Book. Um, yep. Actually try a hardcover book. But, yeah, I'm pretty fortunate that I... I because, because I'm on the, on the computer all day, Kind of my eyes need a break anyway. I don't find it that hard. Look, I would suggest that you are in a minority. You really would be in a minority because the majority of people, and especially with the, with all the apps, you could just spend hours and hours. Like you would not yeah, believe yeah, yeah. apps. Yeah. Like you can get apps where you could uh, upload your body to the app and then put kind of like what you used to have for Barbies, but you can upload your body and then move clothes, different brands of clothes onto your body to see what it actually like it's the apps you could just be on your phone 24 hours a day you really could so my opinion and uh, my answer to your to the question person who mm. asked the question and to anybody is get two things like i've got the cards and the sudoku yours could be a a word search um a anything that's not electronic mind you it's got to be non-electronic um just so you can start triggering your mind it's just about re. It's just about rejigging your mind. So when it's it urges to pick up the phone and scroll, mm. because I find that if I if I scroll too much before bed, that's on the forefront of my consciousness. So if I've seen it, well, you know, or yeah, yeah. But not only that, your your. I think it's been proven that the, you know, just looking at the lights that, or looking at the screens, triggers to your brain that, oh, actually, it's daytime. And because really all we are is shaved cavemen and women, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and our bodies haven't changed in the last 100,000 years. And, and so we, we have all these, uh, th- these physiological responses to all this stimuli that we can't control. And it, absolutely, if you're looking on your phone before going to bed, it will... Potentially you'll go to sleep, but it will affect your ability to to have that deep restorative sleep, REM, whatever it's called, 
That's exactly um, right. I, I'm and, and further to that, I'm more like on what are you going? You should be going into your REM sleep with at the forefront of your mind, you know, a bit of peace and positivity. You should not be switching off your phone, turning over to sleep with at the forefront of your mind. You've just seen a dress on a size six model that you wish you could yes. be. And so at the forefront of your subconscious, you're going to bed thinking that you're unworthy and you look like crap. That's and that's subconscious. You may not even think that consciously, but that is what you're dream. And then you dream with that subconscious in mind. So you don't want those thoughts at the forefront of your mind. So, but this is all the time. Like I kid you not. I, I mean, my my job is I do a lot of. I must admit, my emails on the go and on my phone. Mm. So when I go to the gym, at, I go you know around eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock in the day. That's my break up of the day. When I go to the gym, I put my phone, I connect my AirPods and my phone is in my bag. I do not pick it up. I do not want to look at it. I, in between sets, I look up and every single person from the from the nonno, from the grandpa, he's probably scrolling on some bloody briskler or solitaire um, <laughs> or app to, to the 15-year-old redhead with acne. Like the, everyone is on their phone. And I think to myself, that is this is addic- this is addiction. This is not being able to not pick it up because your mind knows it's there and it's telling you to pick it up and distract from how you're actually feeling. Mm. Yeah, 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 100%. You said all the train as well, train station. Yes, yeah. And what, you know, I mean, at the core of all this is why you're picking up your phone and that's, you know, you need to look at why you're getting distraction. And the distraction, as I said, is okay sometimes, but if, if it's an addiction, you're running from something, and that something is eating your way inside. So get to therapy, find a psychologist, start journaling, write everything down um, mm. because you're on your phone, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram because you're running from your trauma, from your triggers. So get them out. Release. Why, why don't you want to be alone with your thoughts? Correct, because if you did, you'd be frightened to say the least. But... Mm. But if your trauma hurts going in, it's going to hurt coming out. So feel the pain, feel the burn, feel through it and let it go because it will eat you alive. And I kid you not, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, it will show up. It will keep showing up in breakups, in failings, in work shit, in addictions until you look at it and let it go. And if that trauma is related to last week at Cadinia Park, then we can have a we can have a therapy session. I'm holding it. I'm going right. to put it at some community centre. I'm going to put cryptic notices up around the suburbs, and you, if you find it, you will know it. You come along, and we will pray, not to not to God, but to the footy gods. Just tomorrow at Marvel. Let's just <laughs> let's 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 all go go there and treat it as one collective um, therapy. therapy session. And hopefully, Eston play their part and make us all happy. I was about to say, look, it could all be it can all be released with a win, and it can all be overshadowed with a win. So let's just and again, this is true. This is true. <laughs> Even with that, we're overshadowing. If we win, last week's forgotten, but last week's still problems that we have because last week shows what would happen in a final. You know, so even if we win tomorrow night, let's not hide the trauma. Let's still <laughs> feel that trauma, and I hope Brad Scott. Still feels last week's trauma of losing to his brother and him being embarrassed by his brother again, uh, and he he doesn't run away from it, but he works through it. I just have one small ambition. I just want to be able to watch a winning final that actually after HD TV was was invented. <laughs> have you realised that all, all our all our good teams were in standard definition. That's true. In what universe is that just a small – you classify that as a small – what did you call it? Request? Small small victory. A small – yeah, just a small request, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. all I want. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, not quite sure that one can be categorised as small. <laughs> no, probably uh, not. Ginormous is the word that comes to mind for, my, for mine. But, hey, potato, potato, yeah? Correct, correct. Well, thank you to that. Uh, listener who sent that in and again if you want to submit a question to Fiona's couch please do so just 
DM me on Twitter and it If will you want it to be it. truly, truly anonymous, just get onto my NGL link. I'll pin it to my Twitter. Um, just get onto the NGL and yeah, it will be complete it's completely anonymous. I can't see who, who sends these. So before we leave though, I just want to give a, a very big, beautiful shout out to Maria who picked up her cake last night. Uh, she's an absolute lovely, lovely human and a very uh, avid listener of the pod. Uh, so it was great to meet a, a, a pod listener and um, be able to create a nice Essendon cake for her. Oh, her it's an Essendon cake? It was an Essendon cake for her brother, who's who was a very big fan. Fantastic. So what did you do? Uh, did you it? I did, uh, it was yes, it was. I'll send you a photo later. It was a, it was just a, a, a nice round cake, and I just did a sugar scarf, an Essendon sugar scarf with the logos and. Um, a nice big 60 with a sash on top. Um, Amazing. For her brother, yep. So there you go, listeners, something about cake and Essendon cakes. A, you won't get a better cake. B, it's you're not asking for an Essendon cake from some random that doesn't really care. This is someone that loves the club. So I'm sure these Essendon cakes get that extra pinch of love. They absolutely do. In the coming weeks, I've got to do a Carlton theme one, and I'm I've already I've stocked up on the the booze. Yeah, yeah. You could just ask Nick in the ask <laughs> Nick in there. You could lace it with something. Yeah, yeah. I'm not not ready to throw out. My, I need this job for the next little while, so yeah, okay, I'm yeah, not ready so to be cancelled. Being <laughs> sued, <laughs> sued and arrested. Yeah, probably not worth it. Worth but, thinking yeah. about, but not worth doing. That's right. Pleasurable to think, to think. But um, so no, it was nice to get a nice Essendon red and black one out the way first. So thank you, Maria, for your support. It's much appreciated for the pod and the business. Um, so it's just a nice reminder of the wonderful pod listeners who are out there. You know, we're just dickheads talking, really. Let's be quite honest. Yeah, you know, speak for yourself, but uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. We look. We, the the listeners have been going. Listens have been going gangbusters recently, actually. Good. So, um, yes, thanks to Maria and thanks to all the listeners for, for listening. So, yeah, um, hopefully get along to the game tomorrow. Let's roar, let's scream, let's yell, let's cheer and hopefully cheer us home to a, a famous mini final victory in high definition that we can watch again. <laughs> uh, check out the podcast. We'll go out Sunday. And check out something about cake. So thanks to everyone that listened and go Bombers. Good night.